How can we contribute to establishing an affordable fecal sludge collection service for neighborhoods like this, where sanitation needs are mostly met by pit latrines that produce sludge with a high viscosity that is difficult to be pumped and accessed by vacuum trucks? In this module, we will look at a few advances that work towards making sludge collection in these contacts possible. Following this module, you will be able to list innovative collection technologies, name examples of how the design and operation of on-site sanitation technologies can ease collection, and explain what container-based sanitation is. Fika sludge can have a very high solid content, a high viscosity, as shown here in Lusaka, in Zambia, which makes collection with vacuum trucks or vacuum trucks not possible. In addition, sludge with these characteristics is often located in areas where they're difficult to access because of topography, settlement density, or poor road conditions. In the following, we will look at the three technologies that were developed for such sludge that has a high solid content and viscosity. Searching the internet, you'll find other technologies such as the MAPED or the manually operated diaphragma pump that could be suitable for your situation. The RAMA is one example of such a technology and was developed based on the operational experience with the Gulper in several countries. The RAMA is therefore also referred to as the Gulper 2. This slide shows the Gulper and RAMA next to each other. In contrast to the Gulper, where the sludge is sucked through a cylinder, the RAMA lifts sludge with a rising cylinder. The RAMA is an improvement of the Gulper in several ways. Firstly, the connecting rods are located outside of the RAMA and it has a level arm which makes operation easier. Secondly, the cylinder of the rammer can be extended up to 3 meters, whereas only 1.5 meter where possible the gulper. This means that sludge can be collected from deeper on-site sanitation technologies. This video shows the rammer in operation in Kampala. A third benefit of the rammer is that a hose pipe can be connected to the rammer, which makes direct lifting for transport possible and increase the protection of workers. Another technology that has been developed for the removal of sludge with a high viscosity is the screw auger, also called excavator, that has been piloted among others in South Africa, Malawi and India. As shown in this picture, a screw auger lifts the sludge with a screw that is located in a pipe. The screw is being rotated by a motor that is located at the top. As also shown in this picture here, the excavator is placed on a dolly frame to increase mobility and accessibility of on-site sanitation technologies. This picture shows the excavator in operation in Durban. As you can see, the outlet of the excavator is connected to a hose which transported to a collection container. The third technology that we would like to introduce in this module is the EVAC, as shown in this picture. It is a small vacuum pump located on a two-wheel trolley frame. The sludge is collected in the white vacuum cylinder. Once these white cylinders are full, the sludge has to be removed from these cylinders before sludge collection can be continued. This picture shows the EVAC in operation in Chigali in Rwanda. As you can see, with a similar power compared to a small vacuum truck, the EVAC is much smaller and still mobile for use in areas with a difficult topography, poor road conditions or narrow lanes. A problem for the operation of all of these technologies is solid waste that is frequently disposed of in on-site sanitation technologies. Screens at the inlet of these technologies, such as shown here for the RAMA, can prevent damaging of the collection technology, but do lead to glogging and stop the collection process. As shown in this video from Kampala, a metal rod is frequently used to remove solid waste before using sludge collection technologies. Or, as shown here from Durban, it needs to be removed by shovels. Removal of solid waste can be a very time-consuming activity. Also, the solid waste requires management following removal which is likely contains pathogens and puts workers' health and safety at risk. The disposal of solid waste into on-site sanitation technologies is one example how the design and operation of on-site sanitation technologies can influence sludge collection. Sludge collection could, for example, be improved by the implementation of different drop holes for pit latrines that do not allow a large piece of solid waste to enter the pit. This is shown here in a picture from Kampala. In addition, solid waste should be kept outside of on-site sanitation technologies by implementation of solid waste management or education of users. Ultimately, removal of solid waste before sludge collection will increase the service fee that the household has to pay to the collection service provider. This could be a financial incentive for change. 
Next to solid waste, an access point to the on-site sanitation technology can be a constraint for collection. For pit latrines, where sludge might get collected through the drop hole, the drop hole potential needs to be increased, which may affect its future functionality. This picture shows an example of how an access point was integrated into the design of a pit latrine in Kampala. The access point is located here and allows easy sludge collection without affecting the integrity and factuality of the structure. This pit is also fully lined. This ensures groundwater protection and that sludge can be collected without risking the collapse of the pit. Fika sludge is mostly water, which is heavy to transport. Keeping the water outside of on-site sanitation technologies, for example, in source-separating dry toilets, could be another way to facilitate sludge collection. If source-separating dry toilets are connected to a collection service, they are commonly referred to as container-based sanitation. This is currently being piloted in several countries, for example, Haiti, Kenya and Ghana. This picture shows an example of such an on-site sanitation technology in Kenya. The feces are collected in the container in the back and the urine in the container at the front. Every few days, these containers are then replaced by empty containers and transported for treatment. This picture shows such containers before replacement and collection of the full containers in Ghana. In this module, we introduced to three innovative technologies that could contribute to sludge collection in urban poor areas with difficult accessibility, topography, and with sludge that has a high solid content and viscosity. These were the rammer, the excavator, and the evac. In addition to these collection technologies, keeping solid waste out of on-site sanitation technologies, lining, and providing an access point for sludge collection examples of how the design and operation of on-site sanitation technologies can facilitate sludge collection. Container-based sanitation are an alternative to pit latrines that are currently being piloted and could also ease sludge collection.